Yeah, old fellow. I'm trying to concentrate on my music. Do put it down, Holmes. I can hear the strings screeching halfway up the clock. You should develop an ear for music. I have an ear for music. It's your violin playing that makes me wish I were deaf. Surely put my playing has to put you into this agitated state. It's the neighborhood. Baker Street is a perfectly respectable neighborhood. Almost too respectable for my taste. Too respectable? I know, my dear Watson, that you share my love of all this bizarre and outside the conventions and humdrum routine of everyday life. Baker Street hardly qualifies. It's comfortable, but routine. You wouldn't think so if you had to run the call that I just did. Match sellers, ribbon hawkers, suffragettes, push carts. It's busier than a fish market at dawn. Hmm. Baker Street is not the best area for commerce. Therefore, I suspect the match sellers, ribbon hawkers, suffragettes, and push cart peddlers are not as they seem. Talking riddles. I see you visited Lally's bookstore within the hour. It was unable to secure your weekly copy of London Review. How the devil did you deduce that? These traces of Red Clay issue. The workmen are excavating in front of Lally's, and that particular shade of clay can only be found in that one locale. Also, the clay has not had time to dry. Amazing. Since the London Review is the only reason you visit Lally's, and it's a large hung-pound periodical that can't fit into your medical bag, I can only surmise that they were sold out. You astonish me, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. I met a fan, flower woman up the street, pleasant sort, a great admirer of your exploits and my literary talents. Mr. Holmes, sir. Do come in, Mrs. Hudson. There's a gentleman here to see you. That would be Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. He is not alone. How did you know that? It's of no importance. Please show the lady and gentleman in. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I do hate to mention it, but some of the neighbors are complaining about your target practice. Indeed. I do wish you would use my rooms for that sort of thing. It ruins the wallpaper. Quite right, Miss Hudson. Quite right. Lestrade and some woman. Lestrade is merely acting as a police escort. The gentleman in question is none other than the Prince of Bohemia. And the woman is Lady Edwina Hunter, a distant relative. How can you be sure it's that? I looked out my bedroom window as they're getting out of their carriage. Pray come in. Delighted to see you again, Lady Edwina. My colleague, Dr. John Watson. Dr. Watson. Delighted. This is... Shh. Softly. The walls may have ears. Pray be seated. We've come directly from the insurance people. They tell us you've taken complete charge. Correct. What progress have you made, Mr. Holmes? Minimal. Considering your reputation, that's hardly encouraging. You disappoint me. We'll pay you any sum! My professional charges are upon a fixed scale. I do not vary them, except when I remit them altogether. We're desperate. Your Highness, did you love the sister of Alice Faulkner? That's all in the past. The future is all that matters. I see no reason not to answer. <coughs> I loved her deeply, Mr. Holmes. I would have married her. Nonsense. You're too young to know your own mind. Infatuation. Nothing more. Did she know of your feelings? Yes. You say that you would have married her, that she knew of your true affection. Hardly the motives for self-destruction. I have never been able to understand why she did it. Curious. She did everything to live for. What matters now are those letters. In the wrong hands, they could be lethal. I don't think we're followed. No matter. It appears to me our time has been wasted. Mr. Holmes reports minimal progress. I assure you, Lady Edwina, Holmes knows what he's about. You'll forgive me if I do not share your enthusiasm. The stakes are too high for anything but positive results. I think we ought to return to the insurance people and register a complaint. I trust we may see more than minimal progress in the new future, Mr. Holmes. Please, 
for your finances for Holmes. She's been under a terrible strain. I can't bring myself to reprimand her. I understand. I'll be down shortly, Your Highness. I want a word with Mr. Holmes. That lady at Lena is a cold one. Her motives are clear. She only wishes to protect the family honor. Well, being the prince's bodyguard ain't my idea of ideal police work. Uh, I consider it an honor. I've got him to worry about in that heist from the Tower of London. I do hope you'll have time to give me a hand on that one. An audacious crime. Robbery at the Tower of London. That would make an excellent title. Sherlock Holmes and the Robbery at the Tower of London. Sounds like a story for your pen, Dr. Watson, but it's my job. Once this affair with the Prince of Bohemia is concluded, the Tower will have my full attention. I'm obliged, Mr. Holmes. Come on, Strahd. Count on the straw. The man's adult. I thought he could find himself in the lost and found department. The Prince of Bohemia is a rather unique client. You consider the Prince a mere client? A client to me is a mere unit, a factor in a problem. The emotional qualities are antagonistic to clear reasoning. You sound like a calculator. What? Shh. Hmm. Smells of kidney pie. Some of Miss Hudson's good English cooking. Hardly. It's jasmine. Essence of jasmine. Perfume? Why would you come in, Miss Faulkner? Bless me! No need to hide in the shadows. I'm sure those God didn't see you. How did you know it was me? There are 75 perfumes, which is very necessary that a criminal expert should be able to distinguish from each other. At the Larrabee's, you radiated in the scent of jasmine. Markable deduction. Elementary. Holmes, where are your manners? Why don't you sit down, my dear? I'm Dr. Watson. Thank you. I've come to correct a false impression. Indeed. But I would like to speak with you privately. Well, if you want to be alone. No need, old fellow. I would like your opinion regarding this matter. You may speak openly in front of Watson. As you wish. As I've said, I've, I've come to correct a false impression. Indeed. I told you that my prime motive was a desire for money. I do not want money. You seek justice for your sister. Justice? There is no justice. I seek punishment. Revenge. Revenge is not only sweet. It is sometimes therapeutic. I seek nothing for myself. Why didn't you confront the prince outside the house? That wouldn't prove anything. I want the world to know of his disgrace, his cruelty. His... Prince Carl impressed me as a rather pleasant young man. Watson, please. Sorry. Is this all you wanted to tell me? Why didn't you seize the letters when you had the opportunity? Because I am a detective second, and a gentleman first. I see. I'll take no more of your time. I could have Miss Hudson serve tea. She's famous for her cucumber sandwiches. No, thank you, Dr. Watson. I've already imposed. You're still at the Larrabee's. I've made arrangements to stay at a hotel. Modest, but fashionable. Wise. Good day, Sherlock Holmes. Miss Faulkner. Lovely creature. My method seldom fail. She's taken the bait. Bait? She'll never turn those letters over to me unless I have her complete trust. I'm, I'm winning that trust. She seemed charming, disturbed, but charming. I assure you that the most winning woman I ever knew was hanged for poisoning three little children for their insurance money. You don't like Miss Falker? To like a woman is the first step to loving a woman. Love is. An emotional thing. I hope so. Whatever is emotional is opposed to that is true. Cold the reason which I place above all things. Careful. Mr. Holmes? Easy, Watson's the Larry's maid. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I'm so glad to see you. 
What are you doing sneaking in through the bedroom window? Most irregular. Foreman said no one should see me come through the front door. Foreman? My man Valerius, undercover agent. Oh, oh, I'm so nervous. What if the police saw me? They would think I was a criminal. Compose yourself. Sit down. Give me a message. Foreman says they've got him making a bundle of forgeries. They? You mean the letters? Yes. They're making copies of Miss Faulkner's letters. I take it you understand from Foreman the seriousness of this business. He's enlisted my aid. I'm your ally in this, Mr. Holmes. Good, sir. Poor Miss Faulkner. They told me she was demented. I'm quitting at once. No, no. You mustn't do that. No? I wish Miss Faulkner to know that I proposed to buy the false letters. Tell her that you overheard the Larrabees discussing the matter with Foreman. If you say so. But do not tell her that I know the letters are counterfeit. But why? I have my reasons. If you should work with me in the future, I shall demand complete fidelity to my orders. In, in other words, my dear, he doesn't want you to ask any questions. Do you wish to help, Miss Faulkner? Oh, yes. Foreman is right. You mustn't be seen. I suspect the house is being watched. Watched? Careful on your way out. I think they kept the work exciting, Mr. Holmes. I was afraid of that. <laughs> Off you go. Yes, sir. Holmes, this apartment has more traffic than Victoria Station. The game's afoot. I do wish you'd speak so I could understand you. What is it, Mrs. Hudson? A match girl just brought his message to Mr. Holmes. The one with the headaches? The match girl? No, my sister. I simply must go to her. There's no telling when I'll be back. Watson and I can manage. Could I be of any help? Oh, no. It's her nerves more than anything. I'll go for some rose hips and she'll be just fine. We'll be quite all right. There's some cold and raw ice in case you're hungry. Cold liver? Could have sworn it was kitty pie. I'm expecting a visitor any minute. He will not enter this building unless he is certain I am quite alone. Go after Miss Susson. Pretend to escort her to the tram. Then double back to the street. Do not attempt to enter this house unless you hear me cry out for a gunshot. Right, Holmes! No time to argue. Do as I ask. Hurry! What's all the mystery? No one's telling me a thing. People popping in and out. Buy a flower, only a penny. Who wants one? Buy a flower, only a penny. Who wants one? <laughs> Won't you come in, Professor? I find the violin relaxes me. Hand me my violin, and I can forget half an hour of miserable weather, and still more the miserable ways of our fellowmen. I find the same solace in higher mathematics. Are you saving it for a client? No, no. Do make yourself comfortable. <coughs> You're not surprised to see me? Hardly. Your suffragists have been gathering in the byways of Baker Street for the past hour. No about them, I see. But then I would expect no less of the great Sherlock Holmes. You flatter me. I have never underestimated you, Holmes. You are both connoisseurs. You and I have been fencing for years. Our pond gets smaller and smaller. We grow together like a couple of greedy old pipes. Either I finish you, or you finish me. Or we choke on each other. Either way, one bus must go. I take it you have a proposal. Join with me, Holmes, in an alliance. An unholy alliance. I may yet tempt you. Jewels from the Tower of London. Loot from robberies. Stock manipulations. You disappoint me, Professor. You and I know what is most desired. Power. Soon I will have the power to create the greatest crime of all time. World war. Nations will grovel at my feet. Millions will be made. 
Millions wit wits to buy more power. Kings, presidents, emperors will be humbled. But a glorious spectacle, Holmes. The world in flames. I will never let this happen. If you do not agree to join with me, then give me your assurance that you will never again hinder my plans. And if I give no such assurance? Destruction. If I were assured of your destruction, I would, in the interest of the public, cheerfully accept my oath. I shall miss you, Holmes. <whistles> I fear I shall deprive you of that pleasure. But Strahd's men are already rounding up as many of your gang as they can catch in the street. Will some here next? No. I don't know how you hope to put your grand illusion into effect. So you must be free to move about so that I can hound you and discover your plots. I've seen fit not only to reject my proposal, but to do so with irritating smugness. But made insulting references. I cannot allow this to pass. You win the first round, young Sherlock Holmes. But the second round will fall to me. I have my methods. You have been warned. The game's afoot, Moriarty. I will not sleep until I have you behind bars, and your plans are ruined. You have been warned. <laughs>